Hello, my name's Amers and I am the father of Matilda in year two and Isabella in foundation. During the day when I'm not reading chapters, uh, I work for an IT company as a project manager. I'm going to read you chapter 16 of, woof, oh, it's back to front there, um, called Sports Day. On Saturday, Eric did his paper round with Roy and came home as usual for his second breakfast. His mum was in the kitchen making a shopping list. Emily was eating a bowl of Cocoa Pops, yum yum. She had the help of a small teddy a, and a plastic frog who were grouped around the bowl. She said, see my hat. Emily was wearing her bow peep hat in readiness for a fancy dress competition in the afternoon. It was one of those extra events at sports days at school. She would have worn her bow peep dress and carried her bow peep crook too if her mother had let her. Very nice, said Eric. I'll give you 5p for that. No, said Emily. Don't start all that, said Mrs Banks. She's got a bus to catch. I'll give it to her anyway, said Eric, who was feeling generous, having just been paid. After that, he sat down at the table, overtook Emily into the eating of his bowl of cocoa pops, got up and left the room. Mrs Banks called after him. We're going to town. Right, said Eric on the stairs. Your dad will be back about 12. Right, said Eric from the landing. Your sports kit is in your bag. Eric entered his room and crossing and crossed to the dressing table. He opened the drawer, felt beneath a pile of socks and took out the Oxo tin in which he kept the money. He tipped it out onto the bed and added more from his pocket. He began to sort it into one pound piles. Eric had reached five pound forty five when suddenly something happened which caused him to lose count. He turned into the dog, into a dog. Eric crouched on the bed and shut his eyes as the usual unusual sensations rushed upon him. The itching and the curious tingling, the shrinking feeling, the wet nose and the flappy ears. His body, his body, if he could have seen it, have, had gone all blurry. Like a bad photograph, his clothes had ceased to fit. At that moment, the phone rang. Eric, answer that, will you? I would if I could, thought Eric. He opened his eyes and looked around. Eric, the phone! Sorry, Mum. One of his trainers slipped off his shrunken foot and fell to the floor. The phone stopped ringing. Eric pricked his ears. He could hear his mum talking in the hall, followed, followed soon after by the ping she received as the receiver was replaced. Then seconds later, Eric, we're off. Footstops in the hall. Emily's little piping voice, bye bye Eric. Eric, his mum said again and sounded puzzles, puzzled. You all right? Emily's little clumping feet on the, on the stairs. Rapidly, Eric scrambled off the bed and hid under it. Then again, his mum. No, Emily, come on. We'll miss the bus. Bye, Eric. Bye bye. As the door slammed, Eric stayed where he was for a moment and endeavoured to recover his wits. Eventually, he spotted a golf ball under the bed, which he thought he'd lost. He picked it up in his mouth and carried it onto the rug. His movements were, of course, hampered by his clothes. As he wriggled free of his shorts and t-shirt, the thought in his mind was, if this lasts all day, I'll miss the long jump. His underpants were the trickiest to get out of, his socks the easiest, they just tugged off with his teeth. Eric sat on his haunches and studied the golf ball. Now what, he thought. Well, at least he felt less panicked this time, nor were there any swimming attendants to worry about. He wandered onto the landing. The smell of Emily's bubble bath, she tipped too much in as usual, filled the air. Eric considered his options. He could try to get out of the house through the window, say, and go to Roy's. He could stay there till, he was, till his dad arrived and hope to change back before he was found. He could. Hmm. What else could he do? Eric decided there was nothing else he could do. He also decided that climbing out windows would be ill-advised. Besides, assuming he would, cha he would change back, he preferred to do it in the privacy of his own home. Meanwhile, he stepped into his parents' room. Perhaps he would just... I don't know, nosy around a while? And nosy was the word for the boy who was a dog. The house was the absolute map of smells. In his parents' room alone there was Lily of the Valley Talc, an old spice aftershave, Johnson's wax on the chest of drawers and windoline on the windows. A hard to describe overcoaty kind of smell near the wardrobe and, ha and a faint hint of soot in the fireplace. Even his mum's book on a chair by the bed had his own smell. Even no clock. After a time, Eric left the room and continued to prowl somewhat aimlessly around. He looked, 
He looked in at Emily's room. She had a large Snoopy dog sitting in one corner. Eric resisted the urge to have a fight with it and went downstairs. In the hall, he was startled by free newspaper, which came suddenly hurtling through the left box and almost hit him in the head. He glanced briefly at the front page and went into the sitting room. He walked in and, and out of the furniture. He looked out the window. He jumped up and sat in the easy chair. He became motionless. At this point, Eric could have done so. Could he have done so, would probably have drummed his fingers on the arm of the chair. The truth is, he was about to become bored. It appeared there was not a lot you could actually do as a dog on your own and locked up. That's why they go like going for walks, he thought, and then he noticed the TV. Eric left the chair and trotted over to it. Luckily, it was switched on at the wall. He put his nose against the on-off button, that also had a smell, and pressed it. The screen glowed and a voice informed him that what he really needed was a BMX bike. He tried changing the channel but was unable to operate the control, which was a dial. He went back to his chair, turned around in a complete circle and settled down, with his chin on his paws to watch the programme, whatever it was. As Eric watched the usual Saturday morning mixture of pop songs and cartoons, his thoughts wandered during the Yogi Bear cartoon. He found himself remembering the Australian talking dog. He sat up in his chair and tried saying sausages and eggs once or twice, but without success. He also kept an eye on the time. There was a clock in the room. He meant to be at back upstairs under his bed or in his wardrobe long before his dad came home. At about 20 to, 10, 20 to 12, in the middle of a soft drink ad, Eric began to feel thirsty. He went into the kitchen, leapt on the chair and from there made it to a draining board. He inspected the water in which the breakfast washing up was standing and decided to catch drips on the tap instead. He put his tongue out. At that moment, something else had happened. The back door opened. Eric's dad came in and seconds later, Eric himself went out. Eric got the impression his dad was in a hurry. He was snatched so fast from the draining board, for instance, he still had his tongue out and hustled down the garden path and dumped on the pavement before he could even bark. His dad, moreover, spoke and he, only three words the whole time, you again, and out. Later, however, Eric did hear a fourth, which was, Eric? This came in a variety of annotations of volumes. Eric? 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 From different parts of the house and garden. His dad was looking for him, it seemed. Eric sat on the pavement in some confusion and dismay. He considered his, considered his crimes as his dad would see them. The unattended house, the unlocked door, the interloping dog, and oh, the TV. Oh no, I've left it on. He considered his dad's crime too, coming home from work early. Across the road, and up unobserved by Eric, a small cat sat hidden in a hedge, observing him. It was the other one he chased two weeks before. Two weeks older, two weeks wiser, the cat bristled a little, but remained hidden. Eric, meanwhile, had reached a decision. He couldn't stay where he was, and he couldn't get back in. There was only one place he could go. He set off purposely up the road. When Eric reached... Roy's house, he hung around for a while, hoping to see Eric, hoping to see Roy or be seen by him, but no face appeared at any of the windows and no one came out. He trotted up the drive and sat on the front lawn. There was a faint smell of petrol in the air and cut grass. He waited. Still nobody came. No one saw him. At last, though feeling distinctly silly about it, Eric did what he had to do. He braced his legs, threw back his head and howled. When Roy heard Eric, he never doubted it was Eric. He was in his in his room. He was sorting a few toys out for his little cousins to play downstairs. Then they were on a visit with his uncle Colin and auntie Val. Roy rushed to the window and sure enough there was Eric looking worried on the lawn. He opened the window and stuck his head out. Eric? Woof! said Eric. Wait there. I'll be down. Rapidly Roy gathered up whatever toys and games he could lay his hands on. He raced downstairs, almost threw him into the sitting room and said back in a minute Luckily, his mum was in the kitchen and shot outside. Eric was glad to see him. He had come to the conclusion that it was only lonely being a dog. And Roy, through his motives were different, was glad to see Eric. Especially this Eric. The two friends smiled and one of them wagged its tail. Roy's head was full of questions, which he knew would ha he would have to wait. Apart from anything else, he had to, to get back before he was missed. Listen, Eric, I can't come yet. We've got visitors. And he moved backwards toward the door. Eric followed him. No, not you. Mum had a fit. Eric looked mournful and felt the urge to whine. 
Roy said, here, wait in the garage. He led the way. A voice, Roy Mum's, called from the house, Roy? Lie low, Roy said. I'll be back. And he left. Eric, feeling shut out and unwanted, snuffled around the garage for a while. He found a pile of newspapers in the corner behind the mower. He lay, he lay low. He lay low. Eric lay low as it turned out, till almost one o'clock. Roy did his best to get away, but it wasn't easy. He had to entertain his cousins, show some interest in his uncle and aunt, and eat a light lunch. During lunch, Roy suddenly remembered he had volunteered to help with the, with the chairs for sports day. His mum had had doubts about this, and his dad said it was no excuse for eating like a python, but they let him go. A minute later, he was in the street with his sports kit and his bag, money to spend, a couple of apples, and Eric. Eric was really confused. He was following Roy because he didn't want to be on his own, but he didn't want to be in the street either. On the other hand, or poor, what else could he do? Roy, meanwhile, had begun eating the apple. He bit off a piece and held it out for Eric. Despite his troubles, ate it all, ate it all up. Roy said, I'll have to go to sports, you know. I'm in the relay. He swapped his bag to the other shoulder. We've had it for the three-legged, though, haven't we? Wolf agreed. Wolf agreed, Eric. He hadn't thought of what of that. We'd win the five-legged, though, Roy said. We'd walk it. At the corner of Clay Street and Apollo, Roy looked at his watch. It was ten past one. The sports were due to start at two o'clock, he said. Let's go to the park for a bit. That's what I was That's what I was thinking, said it, thought Eric. After that, we'll go to the sports. They've got a pavilion there. They've got a groundsman's hut. He was thinking of places where Eric could hide, if he had to. After that, we'll think of something else. At the park gates going in, Roy and Eric met Kenny Briggs coming out. He was kicking the ball and e eating a stick of rock. Behind him, somewhere behind, came little Melky on a tricycle. He was eating a stick of rock too. Kenny said, hello Roy. Hey, you've got that dog again. Where'd you get your rock, said Roy. Russell's. Whose dog is it really? Give us a bite and I'll tell you. As he spoke, Roy lunged for the ball and dribbled it off with it into the grass. Meanwhile, Eric had his eye on the stick of rock. He was sitting up close to Malky's now stationary tricycle and staring hopefully at his rider. But Malky, no matter how little he was, knew what was going on. He laughed and bounced in his saddle and clutched his rock more tightly. Mine, he shouted. Then impulsively, or perhaps he just wanted to see what, what would happen, he held it out to Eric. Eric, to his credit, hesitated. He felt suddenly guilty, taking sweets from a small child when your dog was wrong, and for that matter, unhygienic. At the same time, it was a particularly large stick of rock, far too big for Malky. At that moment, Alison Dukes came riding up on her bicycle, followed closely by Joan Spooner on, on hers. They were friends again, it seemed. Hello, Malky, said Alison. It's that dog again, said Joan, said Joan. And he wants your rock, Alison said. Whereupon Malky immediately snatched it away and took a bite of himself. Eric, with mixed feelings, trotted over to join Kenny and Roy. Have you failed to agree a swap? They were kicking the ball back and forth between them. Joan said, whose dog is it really? He's not telling, said Kenny. I don't think he knows. I know, said Roy. I know more than you think. He suddenly turned his attention to Malky. I'll give you half this apple for a bite of rock. Malky studied the apple. Don't chew, Malky, said Alison. You keep it. Ask him his dog it is, said Kenny. Then Roy had an idea. Listen, Malky, if you give me a bite, uh, give me a bite, this dog will shake hands with you. He crouched and whispered to Eric, Go on, Eric, be a sport. Eric considered the matter. He could see that Roy was getting carried away. Also, by rights, if any rock was going, he should get it. Then again, he looked across at Malky's little beaming face and he thought, Why not? Eric approached Malky, by who, who by this time had left his tricycle and joined the others on the grass. On the command, shake hands, said Roy. This dog will shake hands, and he said, shake hands. Eric at once held his paw. For a moment, Malky was overcome with shyness, but of course he was delighted too. Soon he was holding Eric's paw in his own sticky hand and shaking it proudly. There, said Roy. Now, on the command, bite rock. This boy will, Roy got his rock though the amount was carefully monitored by Kenny. After that, there was a general rush to see what else Eric could do. Get him to stay, to say, how do you do, said John, Joan. Like that Australian dog, Kenny said. Get him to count, said Alison. Roy, flushed with success, got Eric to count. What's two plus two, he said. Woof, 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 barked Eric. He was getting carried away. Six, take away four, said Roy. Woof, woof. The square root of nine, Roy was good at maths. Woof, woof, woof. So was Eric. 
It was about now that Eric and Alison exchanged puzzled looks. They realised something was going on. So did Joan, but couldn't quite tell what. It's a trick, said Alison. No, it's not. He's just a brainy dog, said Roy. Then Joan said, all right then, what's 496 plus 283? Eric hardly hesitated. Woof, 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 woof. Hang on, hang on, said Roy. We'll be here forever. What's the capital of Peru, said Kenny. What's the time, said Joan. Eric made no reply, but continued to look expectantly at his audience. It was as though he was waiting for the question he could answer, which in truth he was. He hadn't had much attention since his 10th birthday. Roy said, wait a minute, let me have a go. And he said, here's a good one. Which of, the, which of these girls do you like the best, her or her? Eric cocked his head from side to side and then the other. He looked at Joan and looked at Alison up and down. The first thought in his mind was neither. However, secretly, so secretly, he, even, he hadn't even told Roy, though Roy always knew Alison was his favourite. And of course, she knew as well. While well, Eric was seeming to make up his mind, Kenny said, how is he going to choose? He can point, said Joan. That's it, Roy said, point. And so eventually, Eric put out his paw and pointed at Alison. She laughed. He is a brainy dog, she said, and then have a crisp. After this, the gathering began to break up. Kenny had to take Malky home and get ready for the sports. Joan and Alison needed to collect their kit as she rode off. Alison tossed, as she rode off, Alison tossed the final crisp to Eric. He, despite his wayward flight through the air, caught it and crunched it up. As she rode off, Joan called out, Whose dog is it, anyway, really? What's his name? Roy poised, paused for a second and said, Eric. What? Eric, I can't hear you. It's just as well, said Roy. He watched Joan disappear through the gates. You'd never believe it. <laughs>